Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. I'm your host, Haley Hayhurst, the founder of Espresso Podcast Production. I help entrepreneurs and business owners with their editing, marketing, and strategy. And I'm also running a special, which I wanted to note in the beginning of this episode, $200 off my podcast launch package. So if you're thinking of starting a podcast and want to start by January of 2023, now is really the time to start preparing. So come find me, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook. You can also send me an email, hello at Espresso Podcast Production. I was running the special for September only was the plan, but in September alone, I helped two podcasters launched their podcasts, which was so, so exciting for both myself and them. And I really want to help more people get started before the end of the year. So to claim this special discount, which I literally never run, just send me a message and just mention this episode and the discount and I will get you started. It's super easy because All you have to do is record and I do everything else for you. And I also help coach you through the whole thing of, you know, what words you need to use, what your branding needs to look like, how to find your music, how to make all of the things happen. So there's really no question about it. So like I said, this is an amazing discount. This is an amazing program that I do and I'm really helping podcasters make their podcast dreams come true, which is what I absolutely love. Okay, now let's talk about this incredible interview with Buju. She is the owner of Joy Marketing and Coaching. She is an inspirational life coach, NLP master practitioner, and that's what we really talk a lot about. We talk about how she actually made her move from corporate life to moving to America. She lived in California and when she moved here, she didn't know anyone and she also didn't speak English. And this conversation is just so powerful. If you have a dream in mind, go do it. Make it happen. She moved here without knowing English and now has an English podcast just a few years later. So one of my favorite things she says in this is you have to literally want it so bad. You know, you want this change so bad in your life that you feel like you're underwater and the only way to to live, to survive is to achieve this dream. And I think that's what a lot of people need to hear sometimes. So it's all about getting out of your comfort zone, being your authentic self. And I really love this episode and I hope you do too. I cannot wait for you to listen, so let's get right into it. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited to be here, Haley. We've connected before a couple times, and I just always love our conversation. I like how both of our brands really incorporate coffee, and so I think we connected probably close to maybe six or seven months ago, and we've done a lot of collaboration since then. Yes, correct. It's been very fun. So I would love it if you could introduce yourself to the audience and kind of tell us about what you do now and your journey to getting there. Sure. Yes, I always love to connect people from Instagram and from through podcasting. And I do love our branding around coffee too. Coffee is very important for not only my personal life, but also <laughs> my business life. It's a very powerful tool, which I, I will share like today. Show. Um, so who I am, I am from Turkey. My name is a struggle, but you did a great job saying it. <laughs> Burcu Onaranel. I am an inspirational life coach an international motivational speaker. I have a company called Joy, where we help entrepreneurs to improve their brands and have a better marketing strategies using neurolinguistic programming, NLP, which we will be talking during the show as well. And on the coaching side, we also help individuals as well as small business owners to 
find their inner passion and joy to build their life in a way that they want to live in. That's awesome. I was looking on your website and something about your bio that really stood out to me was feeling like you were doing everything right, but still being unhappy. And I think that's a big part of why a lot of people start their businesses. And so the fact that your brand is called Joy is just so fitting. So what were you doing before you started your business? Between 2013 till 2016, I was a human resources specialist in an international company in Turkey. And like you described from my website, I had everything based on what the society taught us what we need to have when you grow up, right? We need to finish the good university, get a decent job which, you know, you need to be based on salary and, you know, in a good corporate world. And I had a car, I had friends. So I was making money, going out, living with my parents. And I was in a very safe bubble. I call it a bubble. It's a comfort zone. I was in it and I I wasn't breathing properly. I felt like I was stuck in that bubble and doing the same things over and over. It wasn't eventful for me. It wasn't joyful where I was meant to live my life in in joy and and share it with others. But I was stuck in that routine. So I started questioning, well, what is wrong with my life? What is wrong with me? I was asking wrong questions to myself which is very important to have a better conversation with ourselves in our life so I started searching I started getting into psychology and what we do why we do what we do so I met neurolinguistic programming which is an amazing tool where you can learn why you do what you do you basically learn how the mind works, how your brain works. And then you find out the patterns you have, the brain waves, and how you can change those. We have folders in our minds, like how we have apps on our phone, you know, all the, the apps and, and the games we download. We have the folders in our mind that are our memories, our thoughts, our beliefs. So we have the ability and power to change those, delete those, update them, you know, recycle them. So if we know how to use it with neurolinguistic programming, we can change that. So that's what happened to me when I started learning neurolinguistic programming back in 2015. I practiced it. I became a neurolinguistic programming practitioner. Then I mastered that. I learned more about it, became a professional life coach. And I was doing it when I was still in corporate world. Mm-hmm. So during the training with the exercises we were doing, I had an aha moment and I said, I'm going to quit my job. This this isn't where I supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And I decided to quit. I had my dream. I visualized that I wanted to create a company and that was going to be an international company based in the United States. And I wanted to become a motivational speaker and share my message with the world because I was discovering what's possible for me. And I wanted to share this with others before it even happened because I was only dreaming this. I wasn't speaking English at that moment. I was still in my corporate job. I was still in Turkey. No ticket, like nothing was happening at that time. I was just dreaming all those things in 2015. And then 2016, March, I quit my job. And on in June 2016, I moved to the United States, like I said, without speaking English, without knowing anyone, without having a job. You know, all my savings, I took the money, converted to US dollars and just booked my ticket and flew to what I wanted to do. Of course, it's a very kind of crazy move, but that's what happens when you really focus 
and really find what you want in your life. And that is possible with you. If you really want to change something in yourself, in your life, it is possible. And that's what I teach people today, both entrepreneurs or individuals, whoever comes to me, even if you come to me for marketing strategies, we still have these conversations because you need to change your mind. You need to really be in the moment and really want to do something for your business too, not just for you. You have to be willing to be present for every single thing you are doing in your life and you have to own it. And for this, we are always working towards your life goals and your passion, what brings you joy. And that's how you become happier and more successful in your personal and professional life. That's so awesome just to like move and really, I'm sure you were terrified at times. And I bet there were people who were questioning your sanity, but (laughs) you still did it. Like you saw the future that you wanted and you went after that. And visualization is just so incredible. But sometimes I find for myself and a lot of people I talk to, like imagining our future selves can be a little difficult at times. So really, I know you use NLP and you've studied this, but really how can we tap into imagining that future that we want? It starts with really wanting to it. Mm -hmm. I think Tony Robbins has a saying, you have to feel like enough is enough. Like you have to feel you are under the water and you can't breathe anymore. That's how bad you want that thing. Mm -hmm. You can't just lay down on a bed and and dream about, oh, I want to be a billionaire. (laughs) That's not going to happen. You have to really like, I can't sleep until this happened. I can't eat that cake until I lose this extra pound. Or I can't sleep until this dream of me or this project is being written or the job application is done. Whatever your your desire is, you can't sleep. You have to be really uncomfortable of the feeling. And that's what happened to me. My dream was super big and I couldn't even speak English. And when I moved to the United States, I was in a place where I was like, oh my God, I need to learn English because I can't survive without speaking. So I put myself in a very uncomfortable place where I had to make a living, speak the language, make friends, study the school, also pay for the school, right? And then figure out the visa status. You probably may heard or not sure how the it works in the United States, but it's super hard as an immigrant for you to to have your visa always, you know, good for you to stay and find apartments to stay, you know, have the credit card. Those are all very difficult stuff if you're an immigrant. And not knowing anyone, it's just super hard. But what people can do who are listening us right now whatever your dream is listen to your inner voice every single day write it down and start doing something that's how NLP works you have to write what you want and then you have to read it over and over you have to feel it Feeling is very important. That's what I use for my clients because we talked about visualizing. When we feel the feeling we want to have in the future, we can call it to this present moment and then we can teach our brain that it has already happened and we are feeling it right now. Like you can dream of your birthday party or your wedding ceremony and you can you can dream of the balloons or, or the dresses you will be wearing or the people will be around you and the, the voices you are hearing or the coffee you're drinking. So what I was doing is that's why I said coffee is very important in my life. I was, you know, all the, the movies I've watched until 
the time I moved to the United States, I didn't know that was the actual lifestyle in the United States. So the in the movies, I was seeing people, you know, walking around with their coffee, going places and, you know, running around and they all drink coffee and whatever. So in Turkey, we don't necessarily drink filtered coffee or espresso a lot. We drink Turkish coffee more. So what I started doing, even in my corporate job because i was having the nlp training at the same time i started drinking filter coffee during the morning instead of turkish coffee so i started changing my habits based on the culture i will be moving in the future mm. so i was visualizing myself drinking my coffee on the balcony in los angeles mm. while i was drinking it in my office in turkey so I was putting the feeling of drinking coffee in the present moment, but visualizing the future moment. So people who are listening to us can do something like this. Like if you're thinking about your, let's say, let's pick the birthday party mm -hmm. and you will be listening to your favorite song. You can put that song while you're doing a project and visualize it in the future and see all the people you will be with and the the things you're hearing and, and the thing you're wearing things like that it's it's deeper than this but I'm I'm really um trying to give people to take something out of this show to really apply in their life because it's very powerful and very important yeah, absolutely. Starting small is definitely important in this, it sounds like, you know, it takes a lot of effort to move across the country, learn a new language or across the world, learn a new language, do all of these things. And so step by step, you definitely have to take it, you know, piece by piece. And so I just absolutely love your story. And the coffee connection to it all is that's so cool. And that's something that we can all start doing, you know, visualizing ourselves. Maybe coffee can ground you in your visualization. Maybe it can do different things. And so I think that's really awesome. So when you moved over here, you were doing all of these things, making friends, getting connected to the United States, learning English. How did you make time for your business? And really, how did you start getting those clients? Do you want to start growing your business rapidly in a really fun way? Do you want to increase your visibility and profits? I have just the thing for you. My course, Great Guesting, How to Grow Your Business Through Being a Podcast Guest is now available and it's guaranteed to get you on podcasts. Do you want to connect with more clients, share your story, make stronger connections, and grow your audience? But do you find that you're second guessing yourself? are indecisive on a topic because you're into so many things and thinking, is this even possible? You'll love this step-by-step -step guide on how to be a podcast guest. We go over six lessons that are knowing your story, narrowing down the topic, finding podcasts to be on, setting up your audio, preparing to record, and of course, marketing, because that's what I'm all about. Being a guest can be fun, but if you don't have a plan to go with it, you're really just spending the hour talking. You're not moving your business forward. And that's exactly what this course is designed to teach you. You can find this course on my website at Espresso Podcast Production, and I guarantee you that you will be a guest on podcasts in no time. So of course, my first year, I wasn't really doing uh, the coaching and I didn't have my business. So I launched my business in 2019. So approximately uh, three years later, but I was having clients from Turkey. So I was managing my time to the Turkish time. And that was easier for me to do because it, it was in my own language. And it was the time where I wasn't going to school. So in Los Angeles, where I stayed one year, I was going to language schools. And then also I studied for TOEFL to get involved um, in the University uh, of California. 
And then I studied digital marketing, social media management, global communication in there. And that's how I started getting clients when I was in uh, the university. First, my instructors wanted to work with me. So they hired me as their assistants and managing their social media and helping them as a VA or doing other marketing things. And then the more I get clients after my school, the more I got confidence and, you know, I improved my English and I joined Toastmasters Club, if you're familiar with. So I it was helping me to improve my public speaking and I became their vice president of education and then public relations. I still do public relations uh, president role for another club based in California. It will be two years uh, this year. And yeah, then it, it just happened. I didn't search for a client. I wasn't even thinking to do marketing. I was learning marketing for my own business because I'm a coach. So I wanted to do my own marketing you know, design my own website, do my own content creation and flyers and all that. So I I did my own marketing. I still do. But when people started hiring me for marketing, I started enjoying it. I started enjoying creating those colors and and the content and all the messaging and, and things. And I enjoyed and they loved what I do. I used neurolinguistic programming in marketing too. And I saw it was very powerful for marketing as well. So I decided to keep marketing in my business too. So it's joy marketing and coaching right now. So we have two uh, services for people. So that's, that's how it started. Very cool. Very cool. And it's so cool that you were, you know, learning English, joining these clubs, really practicing a lot and now you have a podcast and so (laughs) I think that's just incredible because podcasting can it takes a lot of confidence and so I'm sure that was quite a journey for you to actually start it and you know be able to do it every single week and keep up on it and I know you do a lot of Instagram lives I really like the way that you do your podcast I've been on yours and now you're on mine so do you want to tell us about your podcast and kind of the journey and really how you use it to help your business yes and my podcast journey again related to coffee so in 2020 when the pandemic hit I was living in California in Orange County and I always going to the coffee shops to work from there I love I I loved the environment I had friends But when the pandemic hit, I wasn't able to go, right? Everywhere was closed. We had the shutdown and I was sitting in my room, you know, and thinking with my coffee, I said, I miss my friends. I miss talking people, chatting people, sharing ideas. I want to share. I still want to share. I want to inspire people. I want to inspire myself because I felt so lonely because I wasn't able to go visit my family back in Turkey. I wasn't seeing anyone in the United States. So everybody went through this experience. But I think it was quite harder for me as a not, you know, citizen or not having the home. And I really wanted to have that connection. So I, I started shooting videos by myself on my phone. And I thought, why not sharing these videos? So I started, of course, at the beginning, it was very like heart beating. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make grammar mistake or what's going to happen. You know, it, it's never going to be super fluent or as a native speaker, my English. I will always have grammatical mistakes because I use multiple languages. So, but I wasn't super confident at that time to really go on live and just talk about it right now I don't care if I make grammar mistakes because I know you guys also do (laughs) you guys also make like oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) so I'm like I don't care so I shoot my first Instagram live uh by myself with my coffee I call it a coffee o'clock and I just shared 
my daily inspiration with people. This is how I feel today. This is what we can do. It was very short and sweet. And then I started doing this a couple of times. I was doing almost every day because I needed to talk people because I was feeling when I was shooting those videos, people were joining and we were having the, the real life conversation kind of, and they were liking it. They were like, thank you for being here, being the light. And, you know, I have hope after your life. And then people wanted to be on my life. And I was like, well, I don't know how it works. Well, let, let's just start. So I stayed in my comfort zone at the beginning. I called a couple of my friends. I'm like, okay, let's do live with you today. And then with you today, what we should talk. Then I was doing two times a week, which was very hard, but I had time, right? <laughs> we were home. So I had time. I was making flyers. I was having fun with it. I was only doing the live two times a week. This went for probably six, seven months. I was doing Instagram live two times a week. And then in December, 2020, I was thinking, what if I turn these lives into a podcast? So I had a friend who has a media company and I asked him like, can I make my Instagram live videos as a podcast? He said, of course, we just have to, you know, make it. We have to work, work on it. And I thought 2020 was very hard for me and for everyone. I really want to have something out of this year. I wanted to have a tangible product from 2020. So in December 2020, I decided to turn it to a podcast. So it's a Coffee O'Clock podcast and it's been releasing new podcast episodes every Monday. I have solo ones and I have my guest ones. It's a very fun podcast where I have people who share their inspirational stories as well as their expertise because most, not most, all of my guests like yourself, like Haley, they have their own business mm -hmm. and they all have their downtimes and inspirational story to share. So that's the story of the coffee o'clock and it will be two years in, in two months. <laughs> that's so incredible. Congratulations. First of all, I really like how you do it with, you know, starting with the Instagram live and then repurposing into a podcast because marketing and podcasting are very like, they go hand in hand. And I see a lot of people who will promote their podcast very minimally. And they're not getting those downloads that they want. And then they get super frustrated. But by doing an Instagram live and then turning it into a podcast, you're growing both platforms. And so that's really awesome. Have you seen an impact of starting this podcast like on your business, like more clients or more confidence in yourself? I can tell you're more confident than, you, you know, when you started. And so really what, how has your podcast helped your business? Real talk, I don't have super uploads yet on my podcast because I joined a podcast. Um, it was a podcast festival or podfest, something mm, like it. it was a big yeah. event, I think, last year. Okay. And they were talking about there are almost two million podcasts in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's been growing, it's been it doesn't seem a lot, but it is a lot. So yeah. many people are doing it and they are releasing sometimes every other day. They, you know, they have more content or they know the keywording or that's just their business or whatever. So just thinking about podcasts, you know, I cannot say I have zillions downloads. I don't have that yet, but that wasn't my purpose. My purpose was being consistent, not changing my path, you know, being consistent and focused on my messaging. Yes, to the confidence. I gained more confidence in myself and in what I do. I had a chance to learn more from people because it's a great way to meet people, great way to network, great work to tell yourself also learn what others do and how they do. 
I made a lot of friends through podcasting. So I think that's the biggest gain for not only my business, but also my personal life. Like you said, whenever I see your post right now on Instagram, I, I like it. I want to like it. I want to comment on it or I want to support it because we have the connection now. It's not the same when you find, when you search podcasters on Instagram and find zillions of people and, you know, click their bios and like their photos. It's not like that. Now we have the connection and now we can ask each other for help in the future. Like I might tell you, Haley, can you share this? on your story and you would say you probably say of course and I will say the same for you so this is very important to create and that was my focus starting my podcast and Instagram live when the pandemic hit the world because I really wanted to have connection I didn't want to lose this connection people I knew people needed help I needed help so podcasting truly helped me to build community I think I have a huge community right now who I can go for anything I built that from many countries in the world like I had guests from Austria I had guests from the United States I had guests from London from Europe I had from many people and also I think podcast branding like promoting your podcast and sharing your mes message in your podcast in a confident way will also help your marketing your business marketing because you already have that product so right now I'm seeing it coffee o'clock podcast like if you want to know more about me and my business when you go listen one episode or go you know read the description it's like a website for me now my podcast is kind of my brand because I use my coffee mug on my podcast flyer because that's a very important part of my branding. So when people see my podcast and listen to it, they can hear my voice and they can see the vision and mission that I have. So I think it's a great tool for businesses to have. It's not easy to build, but when you build it, you can always improve change you know make slightly changes on your flyer or on your messaging or how you do it you can do solo you can you know change the episode because it's your platform you can play with it so I think it's very important to have a podcast but really own it not like just start something and stop you have to be right. consistent yeah, no, I love that perspective a lot the community aspect is something I speak to all the time because I think that's really where the power of podcasting comes in, really connecting with people on a deeper level and sharing your story. So I love that. And yeah, like you said, there's so many podcasts out there, but very few of them will hit two years like you're about to. And so you're doing incredible. I love your podcast. And Thanks. really, I love listening to it because we do have that connection. We are, you know, friends in this online space. And so definitely the community is very, very important. So thank you for sharing that. I'd love to start wrapping up this episode with you sharing some actionable tips. So if you could share three actionable tips that the audience can start with today to start their business or, you know, break it down their fear, start visualizing. What do you challenge the audience to do? Coffee o'clock. <laughs> so coffee o'clock is which I use for many things in my business. I first started using it for my blog. So then I use it for my podcast. And I have an exercise which includes meditation and neurolinguistic programming and coaching. I call it coffee o'clock exercise and I made it simple for you know shows that I come like yours to share people that can use so I will share a simple way for people to use the coffee o'clock so coffee o'clock is you having a cup of coffee or tea this the first thing in the morning before you look at your phone or computer 
or even talking with anyone. You're not talking to your spouse or your family or your roommates. You're just having a cup of coffee or tea and going to a place where you can be with yourself, only with yourself. This will impact your personal and business life. It starts with you. So we are focusing on you. That's why the first actionable step as tip as you doing you. Put yourself on the to-do list. Like the first thing is you. When you start your day is you. And then this will improve your calmness. You will be happier and peaceful when you start your day. So just being with yourself that's like the simplest way you can do this exercise just holding your cup feel it drink it slowly breathe it feeling grateful and maybe you can write down your goals and what you want to accomplish in that day your intention what you feel just be with yourself you can journal you can do this from five to how long you want to go it's a very uh precious time that you can have for you and the second tip is we kind of touched on it right before, helping and supporting others. I think this is so important for us to do because when you help someone, you have a different hormone goes through your body. You feel good for, for some reason. It's a human biology. Like when you help someone, you feel beneficial to someone. You feel accomplished. You feel successful. And when you support others, then in the future or in the present moment, it, it will come back to you from not necessarily the same person you helped, but from others, because you also need help and will need help in the future, not for just your business, but also your, your personal life. So it's important to help one another. And third one is always focusing on your path like many people especially because of social media compare themselves from someone's beginning to their ending or their middle or the people's ending like you see someone very successful and you don't know what she had been through and you just compare yourself oh my gosh she has this and I'm still struggling in here but through social media, you cannot know what people went through because they only show, they tend to show their success stories, right? So you never know what happens. So just focus on your path and not compare yourself. Just look at people, have them as a role model, but stay on your path because everybody has a different path and you can just follow your own and, and own on your path. Pat and never quit on you. These are the tips I can give and I hope people will do this. I love those. Those are really actionable and really focusing on yourself first thing in the morning is I think a skill that a lot of people have lost because we're so engaged with the world. But if we don't focus on ourselves, then we're not going to be able to help others like you're saying. So I love those tips. I think those are awesome. Where can people connect with you if they want to come work with you? And really, who do you work with? First, I love Instagram. So if you are an Instagram user, you can um, message me. My Instagram is J-O-Y-Y-B-U-R-C-U. And you can also email me. It's B-U-R-C-U at J-O-Y-Y-B-U-R-C-U.com. And it's the same, my website, www.joyburju. And who I work with, I work with people, like I said in the beginning, who really want to change their life and ready to invest time, energy, and money. Mm -hmm. We have people who want it, but don't have the money or energy they only have the time to invest, it doesn't work. If you only have the money, but don't have the time, then that doesn't work too. Like you have to have three of them because I don't believe in complimentary or free stuff anymore. You know, all the things we learned 
in the marketing lessons. I don't believe in them because I personally, when I don't pay, I don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, have to, <laughs> I have to value the person. I have to really acknowledge what they've done and really invest in their time and my time. So I think it's very important. So you really, really want to make a change in your life. I, I love working individuals who want to change their life, who quit their jobs or want to quit and create a new life or small business owners. They are like, I love their challenges because I've been there mm -hmm. so I can help them the most. The small business owners and individuals who want to change their life are my 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 clients. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree with you. If I don't have to pay for something like a free webinar or masterclass or something, I'm like, I'm probably not going to show up to it. <laughs> and I think a lot of people are like that. But that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been such a fun conversation. And I'm glad we got to reconnect and really talk about you and everything that you do. You're awesome. You too. Thank you so much for having me. I love what you do too. And having this platform, having amazing people you interview, it's amazing. Thank you for doing that. And, and please keep doing because we need the content you are sharing. Oh, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started with your business today. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Employee to Boss podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Remember, a little progress each day leads to big results. We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out EspressoPodcastProduction.com.